Hello everybody and welcome back to Lunch Race with Cone. This week we are back to the Grand Am series. We're going to be in the McLaren at Road Atlanta. Uh, Road Atlanta is a fast, narrow track with a bunch of elevation change and is something that's, in my opinion, pretty unique to America and uh, has more character than, than, than pretty much any track I've seen here in the States, so I'm excited to go ahead and tackle it. So here we start start off in practice. I have done um, I have done races in the Mustang here, but uh, that, is, that is about the extent of my experience. Uh, I do date back to NASCAR 2003 and some Trans Am races at this track, but I, I found it to not be overly relatable. So here we can see we're coming down the top of the hill here, down the S's, which which doesn't look too impressive uh, in the in the game, but I've been to this track in real life and it's it's a sight to see. You you are really going down a hill. And it's 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 funny in the way that the car reacts and in the downhill sections, more so in this car than, than I noticed in the Mustang. You get a ton of understeer on those downhill sections. And then when you dive on, up to the uphill, it seems like all of a sudden that that translates into oversteer, and you can't get off the turns when you're going up the hill, which is strange to me because I've definitely always found that the opposite is true in road racing cars. But this is my first experience in a, in a mid or rear engine road racing car. So back up another hill, and then down down here to the front stretch and the start finish line. about, as you can see there, 12 laps into practicing here, and uh, 122.7 is actually a pretty respectable time. Uh, it's not a little bit direction there. Not the top of the charts by any means, but it wasn't it wasn't as far off as I had been in you know, the past couple weeks. So before starting this, I I kind of, you know, poked around and see, wanted to see what other people were running in. A 119 seems to be about the fastest the McLaren runs here. Uh, 120s are about what people are qualifying in my division, and 121s in the race is about about where I need to be. So that is what I'm shooting for. Breaking markers here. They got the stripes across the track. They got they got meter signs outside the track. It's very and there's there's enough scenery here. That it's really easy to pick some breaking points. A tough part of the track there. It gets it gets surprisingly narrow all of a sudden. So you you got to be really really on your marks. You get yourself in trouble. That's, that's somewhat what I mean there. You just you kind of just barely miss your marks, and uh, and getting in the world of hurt really quick. Track is really narrow. Uh, it kind of widens up for some of the turns, so you, there's some passing opportunities. But especially through here, it definitely narrows up. So a little bit later on, um, this is a new practice session with an, another 16 laps in the book. I've really been turning some laps here, feeling comfortable. And I picked this whole section to be this week's to be this week's improvement breakdown. So that's turns two through five. So right here we're gonna enter all the way to the left side. Um, I've seen a lot of people swing right and then they'll dive back to the left here. I am not doing that, I'm staying to the left. Um, I'm staying to the left so that you can come straight across the curbs right here. Let's just see in a second. So here we go. So you try to straighten that turn out as much as possible. And then coming down the S's here, uh, 
Now, other cars in the Mustang, this was all pretty much flat through here. But in this car, I'm kind of feathering to get to the right, but you want to get to the gas just as quick as possible. So by here, by the time I'm hitting that concrete, I'm wanting to be on the gas. Then coming down to here, once again, getting all the way to the side of the track, but not on the curb, because that curb will kill you, before turning left up into here and then up the hill. Uh, the curves all through this section are just killer. Uh, unfortunately, to make good time, you really got to use them, especially this one here. But uh, you, you've got to be real careful about how to get back on the gas there because those curves through that whole section are just they're real aggressive. And this car has so little suspension travel, it seems to upset it very easily. So at this point, I've run a couple 121s. Um, getting a lot more comfortable with the track, and I'm feeling if I can run 121s in qualifying, I'm, I'd be pleased with that. Even though it certainly wouldn't put me uh, in pole position or anything like that. So at the start of qualifying, I had found some more setups and had actually picked up some time with them. But for whatever reason, when I got into qualifying, it just, it, the car wasn't comfortable enough to make it work. See there, that's that's really not the line I'd, I'd like to be running. That's, because when you pinch it off to the right, it kind of upsets you through the whole rest of the essence here. A lot of understeer through there. Understeer there. And that's, that's something I am continually fighting with this car. Fighting <laughs> fighting some computer issues here. I was having some weird fraps issues where I was flag, so I'm simultaneously driving and trying to figure out the recording as I'm going. Let's walk straight away to sort things out. All the way down to second gear. The best part of this car, it's excellent braking. This section here could be a lot faster, but again, not being precise enough with uh, hitting my marks. Turn one was a little bit more tricky in the Mustang than it is in this car. Uh, it's pretty point and shoot into this one. You just gotta get that right mark and dive in there, and it's pretty consistent through there. One thing I want to try and do in these practice and qualifying episodes is recap kind of what happened in the last week's race, and uh, that actually ends up being the Mazda MX-5 Cup race at Watkins Glen. Actually, that was the Grand Touring Series in the MX-5. I did those races because I wanted to try and get a little bit more racecraft experience and get back into that that mentality of of I can race with these people and I can push hard and, and not be worried about uh, overdriving the car. That first race kind of had the opposite effect on that. Uh, it was great that, that first, you know, 75% of the race was awesome racing. Those, those guys were really good. But uh, a weird mistake that I don't fully understand what happened. I ended up taking me out. And then in the second race, it was kind of the exact opposite. There was virtually no racing. I drove a pretty clean race, but I, I, didn't, I didn't gain any confidence because I didn't really get to race with anybody. So, so I'm coming back to Grand Am this week only because I really, I really wanted to run this course, and I'm hoping, I'm hoping my confidence is, is good enough to, to really be racing even in this series. So, so we'll see how that goes. This is the last week of this season, so so that'll be the end of this season of, of Let's Race with Cone. But there's only going to be a one week break between next the next season and our racing, so I haven't quite decided what I'm going to do, but I know I'm going to do a series, and 
Now what I'm going to do is start to finish, so no, no more of this hopping around between series. It's going to be all one series all the time. So here we're going to jump a little bit further ahead into the practice session. I go back to the original setup because I was obviously feeling more comfortable with it. So at this point I'm running real low fuel, trying to make a real good lap, uh, driving real aggressively, pushing about as hard as I can push it. And to the first part of the lap, it's looking pretty good. Tracking to run 121. That's where I wanted to be at it. I, I know it's going to take a 120 to get up the front of the field, but uh, it didn't feel it didn't feel it was completely necessary. Kind of flubbed it up there, a little, a little too aggressive through the slower slower hairpin turns there. But it's still a, a good enough launch out of there to get a good run down the back stretch. As you can see, the the other McLaren's already run a 119. He's a Division 1 racer, so I'm not too worried about that. Good run, good run through the last sector here, and... 121.6 which I'm more than happy with that's that's what I set out to do uh, I'm still pushing pretty hard but then I realize not really enough fuel left in the car to even attempt another lap so there's enough time in the session to try it one more time Let's see a really good one through one you can either be slow on entry and fast on exit, or fast on entry and slow on exit. Doesn't seem to matter. Either way. Good run through there. Getting quite a bit of curve, but uh, didn't ruin it. Here. Real tricky there. Uh, the car, as you transfer from the downhill to the uphill, you can see the suspension will really, really compress, and it just sometimes you can just just upset the car enough to do something like that. <laughs> so that was that was all the time we had. Uh, qualifying is over. You can see pretty low down the charts in qualifying for Division 3. But that's not too heartbreaking to me. I'm still pretty confident about how consistent I am around the track and hopefully can get in a pack of cars that are similar similarly paced and get back to doing some door-to-door -door racing. But until then, my name is Cone Dodger, and I'll see you next time.